Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in here this morning. And uh, Miss Elena, thank you so much already uh, uh, posting in the comments. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, it is a beautiful Wednesday, although I thought it was Wednesday yesterday. I was all me messed up yesterday. Uh, any of you losing your days? I, I completely lost my days yesterday. Good morning, Brother Romy. Good morning, Brother Philip. Appreciate that. And uh, thankful to be able to be with you here this morning. Looking forward to having question and answer. And I've got uh, a few questions that have been submitted over the, the, uh, the past couple days. So I'll answer those first. And then if you happen to have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments and I'll try to get to them here uh, as fast as I can. And so uh, uh, I'll, I guess I'll just jump right into it. Here we go. Question number one. This was a good one. Are the Jews who died before reaching the promised land in heaven, um, were they saved? Are they asleep? Uh, are they waiting judgment? What, what's going on with those Jews? As we've been looking at it here through uh, uh, the book of Hebrews, we've noticed the um, in the past couple chapters as the writer has been talking about the Jews not entering into that rest. And uh, the question is, what happened to those Jews? Well, I think the better question is, how do Old Testament uh, people get saved? And... Uh, um, Really, there's the promised land was not a picture of heaven. It was a picture of uh, full submission to God's will. And so for them not to be able to enter into the promised land was a picture of them not fulfilling God's perfect will for their life. Um, however, for each individual, they had to still put their faith and trust in God uh, to take care of them and to... Uh, uh, basically uh, forgive them of their sins and to take them to heaven when they die. And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, it, it, the Old Testament, we see a lot of actions taken by the Old Testament. We see them fulfilling the law. We see them that they are, uh, uh, um, oh, Brother Nate, I'm sorry to hear that. We'll definitely be in, in prayer for you uh, here. And we'll have a word of prayer at the end of the of the stream here uh, for you. But uh, um, the Old Testament saints still had to trust God for their faith, even though they were performing the law and doing all these actions. And uh, I think the best verse for this comes in the book of Romans. And so if you have your Bible, let's go to the book of Romans chapter number four. Romans chapter number four. Romans chapter 4 here, and uh, let's take a look at verse number, uh, we'll just start from the beginning of the chapter, and while you guys are turning there, quick coffee check here, and uh, got my coffee from this morning, had to reheat it though, uh, I was sipping on it slowly, it was needed this morning, there we go. And uh, by the way, at the end of this stream, I'll also announce the three winners for the Starbucks gift cards there. And I'll be in contact with you here today to see how I can get those to you. Uh, Romans chapter number four, verse number one, the Bible says, What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, father was pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And uh, uh, we see here that uh, the writer, and by the way, if anyone has Miss Linda's uh, uh, Facebook, um, if, if you can get a hold of her, she's, I know she's looking for this video, so if someone can help her with that, that would be great. Uh, if um, Abraham was the father of the uh, is Israel nation. He, he was Father Abraham. We even sing that song in junior church, Father Abraham had many sons. Um, and so the writer of Romans here goes all the way back to the book of Romans, uh, or I'm sorry, to Abraham. And he begins to talk to him about, um, he begins to talk uh, about how he did all these works 
but he didn't do these works to be glorified of himself, especially standing before God. He did these works uh, because he had faith, and his faith led him to do these works. And uh, uh, how, how verse 3 is so important. Uh, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So in, in back to our question here, what happened to those Jews that didn't enter into the promised land? Well, they all had to have the personal responsibility of putting their faith and trust in God, just like we do. Um, and despite them not being able to go into the promised land, while they were wandering the wilderness, they still had to trust God that he was going to take care of them. And so for some, they were, uh, um, it was counted to them in righteousness, and they would go to paradise until Jesus Christ paid the, uh, 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 paid the sacrifice on the cross. And for some, unfortunately, they died. And as the Old Testament calls, they went to Sheol. Sheol is the, is the grave. Uh, and they stayed there until Jesus made the sacrifice. And then hell was enlarged. Death was enlarged and swallowed them up. And so that's, that's uh, uh, what was happening with that. Um, good question. Very good question. Uh, question number two, how do you know we can't lose our salvation? How do you know we can't lose our salvation? I uh, had, had this posed to me by uh, someone, uh, and they're, they're of a different, different denomination, different faith, and they were saying, is it possible that you can lose your salvation, or how do you know that you can't lose your salvation? Well, there's a few verses I, I think that we can, we can turn to. Uh, first of all, John 3, 16, one of the most popular verses in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have, notice this, everlasting life. Now, everlasting life is important because it means it's everlasting. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It just doesn't go away. Uh, and so uh, that's the first verse. And you say, well, that's just one verse out of context. Uh, how do you know that, that's, that you're basing a whole doctrine on that? No, there's, there's other verses. Uh, in fact, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Would you go to Ephesians chapter 2? The book of Ephesians chapter 2. Oh, Brother Jude, you're out of coffee. Well, hopefully you're one of those people that won the Starbucks gift card and you can get some uh, uh, coffee here. Sorry to hear that. Ephesians chapter 2. Here, I'll drink, I'll drink another sip for you. This one's for Brother Jude. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, and look at verse number 8. It says this, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, you say, Pastor, that has nothing to do with eternal security. It has everything to do with eternal security. Because it was not your works that led you to get salvation. It was not your goodness or your righteousness that led you to salvation. Uh, it was all because of God. And if it was because of God when you were in your trespasses and sin, uh, as the Bible says, you had your back turned against him, uh, then even when we falter, even when we mess up within our Christian life, it is still up to him to maintain that salvation. And so uh, uh, just as good as God is, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Brother Jude. And uh, Brother Philip, thank you so much all the way from Uganda. You be in prayer for Uganda. They're on a complete and total lockdown. And uh, we're in prayer for you, Brother Philip, and your people. Um, just as it was up to God to grant to us salvation in his grace, it's up to God in his mercy to keep us. In salvation. But here's another verse. Would you go to, this one's for you, Brother Jude. Jude, verse 24. Jude 24. Jude 24. And Brother Rick Dolan was watching. He would know this verse. He'd probably quote this verse upside down, inside out. This is his life verse. Jude 24 says this, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to pre present you faultless before the presence of 
of his glory with exceeding joy. Notice that it's up to him. He's the one that presents you faultless. He's the one that keeps you from falling. And so just like it is him that is providing us the salvation, he's the great sacrifice. It's also him that is keeping us. He's the keeper of our salvation. But one other passage in scripture really helps us out. And that's in the book of John, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And uh, we start reading here in, in verse number 28. And he says, I give unto them eternal life. Very important. I give them, meaning those that receive him, eternal life. And they shall never perish. Uh, these are imperative words, meaning uh, eternal lasts forever. Never means it, it won't happen. Uh, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. This passage is so important for us, and it's so important for eternal security, because you have to take a look at three different uh, uh, cases here. Case number one is the fact that what God gives us cannot be tarnished. It cannot, as we found in the book of Hebrews, it can't fade away. It will always remain. Uh, God it doesn't give us anything that's broke or anything that's going to rust. He always gives us everything that's great. And even when it comes to our salvation, we may not appreciate it. We may not take care of it the way we should, but God always gives us the best. Number two, the, uh, what we need to look at is the fact that uh, Jesus is holding us in his hand. We are, we are stayed secure in the hand of Jesus Christ and uh, how important that is and how comforting that is, especially in this time that we're living in. The third thing that we need to look at is that the Father then takes his hands and covers the, the Savior's hands. And uh, uh, if it was already a comfort to know that you're in the hands of Jesus Christ, imagine how you're in the everlasting hands of the Father, and no man can pluck us out. And so that's why uh, we believe in eternal security. And a very good question. Here's another question. Uh, good question here. During these times, what's the best Bible or book study here that we can do? And uh, I have... Uh, within our devotions, I've kind of taken two books that I think would be a really big help in uh, uh, the book of Hebrews because Hebrews speaks specifically on how Jesus is better than, than everything. And I think we need to focus more on Jesus than we do our problems. And uh, uh, we, we sing this song, uh, uh, how uh, uh, I found the answer, I learned to pray. How important it is for us to uh, uh, yield ourselves in prayer to Jesus because he's always the answer. And uh, the second book, which is another study that we're doing on Saturdays, is the book of First and Second Peter. Um, First and Second Peter deals expressly with this thought of suffering. And uh, uh, suffering is something that none of us like. Um, none of us like the idea of going through hardship. Uh, nobody says, man, I just really wish I had a problem today. No, we don't, we don't do that. Um, However, there is great, uh, there's some great lessons, there's some great uh, spiritual growth that can happen in the midst of suffering. And, uh, uh, and so the, the book of First Peter and Second Peter are great for that. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you two books in the New Testament that aren't the ones that we're studying in, and two books in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, I think it would be really good to look at the book of Exodus, in particular the, the, where the plagues were happening. Um, just to be able to see how God spared the children of Israel, spared his people in the midst of plagues. Um, the book of Exodus, uh, the word Exodus means to exit, and how God allows us to exit problems even though we're in the midst of them. And uh, what, a, what a great, great thing to study uh, in that. Uh, the second thing is to look at uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. One thing that we're I think being in shelter in place and staying home and kind of not being able to do all these other extracurricular things is 
we're kind of learning what's truly important. When we don't have all the distractions, we figure out what's vain and what's what truly has substance. And I think uh, the book of Ecclesiastes is a perfect book to, to study. Now, kind of a side note, if you're studying the book of Ecclesiastes, understand there's a lot of it that is spoken there kind of tongue in cheek. For instance, he, he, he says in one uh, passage, he says, eat, drink, and be merry. Does he really mean that? Well, no, that's his philosophy, uh, living in a vain lifestyle. Um, and he, he kind of, Solomon goes back and forth in this, um, in this carnal, spiritual battle. And his final conclusion is great and something that we need right now. And uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with that book, I, I would suggest you, you read it. And then in the New Testament, uh, the book of Philippians, always the book of Philippians. Philippians is such an important book. The key theme is joy. And good morning, Ms. Mateo. I appreciate you logging in here. Um, the, the book of Philippians, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, within the five short chapters, I believe 14 times there's some derivative of joy, whether it be rejoice or joy or uh, joyousness. There's some, some sort of idea of joy. And this book comes from... Paul writing it in a Mamertine prison, uh, ready to die, essentially. And how he could speak about joy is such a, a necessity for Christians in the midst of hard times. And then also the book of James. James is a book that deals with living the Christian life in a practical manner. Um, there's a lot of things in the Christian life that are, you know, more doctrinal, more um, high-minded thoughts, philosophies um, that really don't affect us on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. However, the book of James talks about things that every day we deal with, every day we're going we're gonna to handle, whether it be, good morning, mom, thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, uh, things that are going to help us every day that we live our life, whether we're at home, whether we're uh, out at the stores or doing what we need to do. Uh, the book of James is a, an incredible book. And so those are the books that I would suggest for you to study. Uh, next question. Here we go. Uh, let's see what we have here. And if, if you have other questions, feel free to log them, log them in there uh, in the comments. Uh, question, this is from a Bible college student. Uh, after graduating Bible college, what was one thing that the ministry taught you? Uh, that's a, pff, narrowing it down to like one thing is incredibly difficult. Um, right after Bible college, I, I went and worked for my brother-in-law. Now I was offered other positions. Uh, I was offered a position in Illinois to serve for uh, serve in a church in Chicago. I was offered a, uh, uh, a uh, position in uh, uh, Nevada, uh, working for a, a pastor there. I was offered a position in, in, uh, um, in, in another church locally here. I was offered a position and just felt as if God didn't want me to go there. And I worked for my brother-in-law, Brother Strofe. He had just started a church. It was uh, only a year, uh, two years old. And uh, I... Uh, I miss Bonnie. Sounds good. Breakfast. You know what I'm missing? I normally, every morning, I always have some sort of apple something, apple pie, apple turnover, apple. Uh, I went to my box, my stash of apple pies, and they were all dried up, and so I'm missing that this morning. So uh, glad you got your breakfast, but I'm going to get an apple something after this. Uh, but uh, uh, after I came here, uh, God just kind of, he, he taught me faithfulness in areas. My job was to put out a sign in front of the, in front of the school that we were at and uh, around the corner uh, from where the, the school we were meeting. And it was just to put out a sign and put out some balloons. And I thought, man, I'm being underused. But that taught me so much about faithfulness. And uh, come what now? Uh, almost 15 years later, actually 15, exactly 15 years later, um, I, I'm in the same church. I'm now pastoring the church. 
And uh, so faithfulness was definitely one of them. But I can, I can rattle off a bunch of them. I mean, uh, you'll, you'll, I think what you do behind the scenes is far more important than what people see. Um, the, the idea that uh, people are going to leave you, but God's always going to stay. That thought, man, that, that, that hit me in the past few years. Uh, seeing, seeing some people leave and uh, sometimes, it, it, I mean, sometimes it struck hard, but understanding that God always stays. Um, I think uh, the importance of self-growth, always try to grow yourself, be a better, uh, whatever area you're serving in, be better at it and, 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 and learn how to, how to speak, learn your Bible more, learn, uh, learn how to soul win better, learn how to, uh, just, I mean, right now, one of the things I'm learning is learning how to be in front of a camera and not get so nervous. I tell you, every time that camera turns on, I get nervous. And, and so bettering ourselves is another one, but I think probably the most important thing is understanding that everyone has something in their life. Uh, what do I mean by that? Everyone's going through something. Everyone has some sort of issue. Even the people that don't look like they have any issues, they've got issues. Everyone has issues. And not to judge people because of their issues. Um, you look throughout the Bible, you see people all throughout the Bible who have their issues. And uh, um, I don't think we ought to judge people because of their issues. Uh, I think we ought to try to help people where they're at. And... Uh, um, I think there's a passage in scripture that says, ye which are spiritual, restore. And I think the most spiritual people are those that don't judge people's problems. They try to help them get over their problems and, uh, and become better people because of it. And so that's probably the greatest lesson that I learned out of Bible college. Uh, next question. Um, you talk about relationship over religion. Is it bad to be religious? That's a good question, and um, I think I think there's probably an issue of definition that needs to be answered here in order to fully grasp what what I mean. Um, the definition of religion is a particular system of faith and worship, and I think we as um, I am in my, if I can call it denomination, is I am a Baptist. That is not my religion. That is the, that is the beliefs or the doctrine that I adhere to. My religion is Christianity. I am a Christian. And that is the system of faith and beliefs that I follow. However, the reason why I preach relationship over religion is because Oftentimes, we get so focused on the system that we forget the reason why we believe those things. And the reason always is the relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, would you turn your Bible, would you go to, with me to the book of James for just a moment? James chapter number one. Maybe this verse can help you with this distinction. James chapter one. Amen, Brother Philip. Once saved, always saved. Praise God for that. Yeah, that, that switcher logo was annoying, but we uh, since this is something that we'll probably be doing for a while, I went ahead and bought the program. And so no more switcher logo. We get the VBC logo now. We're uptown now. Here we go. Uh, uh, James chapter 1. And I want to look here at verse number... Uh, uh, Verse number 27. And actually, let's look at verse 26. It says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Uh, now, he starts off by talking about how this person is speaking and what, how he's acting. And he says, if this man is acting in such a way that is contrary to his religion, then his religion is vain. And then we see here in verse 27, it says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep 
than himself unspotted from the world. So what is true religion? Our true religion is something that we believe. It's something that we follow. And uh, the way we practice it, excuse me, the way we practice it is in such a way that it not only benefits other people around us, especially those that are in need, but it also keeps us unspotted as far as sin within our own life. And uh, that's, that's the true essence of, of religion. The Pharisees, they were very religious, but they followed a system, not, they didn't have a relationship with God that would allow their religion to actually have substance. To have true substance in your religion and be a true, pure, religious person means that you love the God that you follow. And because of that, you keep yourself unspotted from the world and you also help out those that are in need. That's why one of the biggest things, and I got to talk to our head deacon uh, yesterday, Brother Catalan, and I said one of the things I really want to do is I want to help families in need. I want to help people right now because now is the time. I want, I want our church to practice true, pure religion. And so uh, that's, that's my goal on that. And uh, uh, that's true. That's true. Having, it all, having the logo on the bottom is a lot better than right above my head. Um, here we go. I, I think that, that, it, that might be the last question here. I think that was the last question. And uh, uh, thank you so much for asking these questions. I appreciate it. Hopefully these were a help to you. And uh, tune in tonight, tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, I'll be here in the home studio, I like to call it. Uh, we'll, we'll have everything all, all squared away for uh, our Wednesday evening Bible study. Um, I, hope you, I hope you tune in for that. Uh, looking forward to it. I want to have a word of prayer with you before we go. And I want to remember to be in prayer for uh, 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 Nate. Nate Pittock and his family, as they, uh, he's out of a job for right now. Let's be in prayer for them. And uh, uh, let's remember those that are uh, struggling financially, struggling um, with their health. And uh, um, let's uh, continually be in prayer. I think one of the challenges that I've had this week was uh, for our church was that we would call someone and pray with them. And I've been able to pray with a few of my, my pastoral friends and and uh, I appreciate that. that. That was encouraging to me. I needed that. But uh, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then I'll let you go ahead uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Heavenly Father, I love you. Thank you for this opportunity for uh, this question and answer time. And uh, Lord, I, I, I know I'm not the smartest. I know I, I'm probably not the most eloquent. But Father, I pray that you would use what, what you've taught me to prod each person watching to study their Bible more, to become more of a student of your word. And Lord, may we not simply become religious, but Lord, may we grow a relationship with you that our religion actually has substance. Father, I pray, now I'm thinking of uh, Nate and, and Maggie as their, uh, um, Margarita, as they're uh, uh, now uh, struggling without, without this job situation. I pray that you would uh, provide for them and, and show them your goodness in this time of need. Lord, I pray that you would uh, put your, your hand upon uh, every pastor locally in this area as there's a anxiety of if our people are going to get too comfortable with living room Christianity. Uh, I pray that you would uh, cause us to have a fervor and a desire to get to the house of God. Lord, I, I pray for those that are working on the front lines in our health care, groceries, and uh, shipping, and all of those different areas. Uh, thank you for them and protect them. And Lord, I also pray for our government. Pray for our president and our governor and the mayor of our cities and, and Lord, all, really all over our country uh, and, and world that you would take care of uh, us and give great wisdom to them so that they can not just look at the politics of the matter, but look at the people. And uh, Lord, we love you. Thank you for all that you've done. Uh, Lord, I pray for Brother Philip and the people there in Uganda uh, and also the people there in the Philippines that they're on uh, strict uh, lockdown. And, and Lord, I pray that you would uh, put your hand upon them, give them great peace. I pray that you'd provide in their times of need. We love you now in your holy name. Amen.
Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got three winners from yesterday. I said that there would be three winners to the Starbucks gift card. Winner number one was Brother Romy Rivera. Brother Romy, you, uh, I'm going to get in contact with you, get you a Starbucks gift card. Uh, winner number two was uh, uh, Miss Danny Pereno. And uh, winner number three was uh, uh, Miss Nikki Perry. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll be getting in contact with you how to get those. Tonight, 7 o'clock, don't miss out for our uh, Wednesday evening Bible study. I love you. See you. God bless.